Hey, Dave Kittle here. Welcome back to the Dave Kittle Show. Today's topic, we're going to cover the two biggest things that buyers are focused on and that they really care about when buying some or all of your practice. And today we have a guest on the show, Ted Leverett. He's an author, the original business buyer advocate. He is helping in the searcher and transaction advisory niche and you can check out his website, partneroncall.com. We're going to get into all of that and more of his background. Ted, first of all, good morning. Welcome on. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. So today we're going to cover uh, a, a bunch of things and we have a screen share. So if you're listening on Apple iTunes or if you're listening on Spotify, it would be good for you to jump over to YouTube for you to get a little bit more uh, context and a little more focus around this. We have a little uh, screen share here for you just to keep you on target and on track. And so Ted, today, let's talk about the two biggest things that buyers are focused on that they are looking for when acquiring practices, whether they're buying some or all their practice. We can go into that. I know in the pre-interview, you mentioned that you have a background in healthcare, which would probably be good for you to uh, go into. Uh, I'll kick it over to you. How do you want to go into it? Well, I started my career in hospital administration. And I created one of the first um, shared services and group purchasing organizations in the United States. From that, we went on to various kinds of consulting with physical therapy practices and others. So I've been somewhat involved. Nowadays, I go way beyond healthcare to just about any kind of business anywhere in the world. So I, I, I know your audience, and I'll try to say things today that sort of fit it. But here's what you need to know. What are people buying? Well, they're buying the employee talent and they're buying the cash flow. A lot of people say buyers are buying cash flow. Well, forget about that because it's the employees that what? Create the cash flow. And you know what? The kind and size of company does not matter. When you say that they're uh, they're buying the, the relationships, the employees, um, it certainly is important, right? Because the without the without the employees, there is no treatments that are being rendered there's basically no income. So when buyers are looking at, they might be, I mean, there's many things on their list, right? So they might be buying uh, a practice to get a foothold into a certain state or a certain region, right? They might be buying, they're trying to get some of the insurance contracts, they're trying to get a physical uh, establishment, maybe in a different market. They are looking at many other things in terms of their their reach, they're trying to grow their EBITDA, there are many other things. But you're saying at the end of the day, buyers are, specifically looking to acquire talent and cash flow. And so if if the audience, they're practice owners, and how could they best keep this in mind and, and use this as part of their exit strategy and, and their succession plan? Well, one of the ways they can use it is have talent. Don't, don't have people who are not productive. It's really that simple. In other words, satisfy the customer, satisfy the patient. You do that, guess what? You get cash flow. If you get cash flow, you can make a profit. If you make a profit, the business is valuable and somebody will want to buy it. And that provides the exit plan for whoever owns the facility. Excellent. So let's go into the screen share that you're showing right now. We're looking at the 2023 marketplace forecast. Let's go into that. Well, let's start with 21. We all know what 2020 was. It was not so hot in a lot of sectors. 2021 was great. Lots of deal making. Sellers were making money, buyers were making money. 22 began very enthusiastically, but guess what? Now the sentiment is more focused on risk. Deal making is slowing down right now in November, and it's gonna to continue to slow down. Values are going down in many sectors, even in healthcare, unless you can prove that businesses have the cash flow, practices have the cash flow that is sustainable. So what's happening, and this is sort of good news for sellers, is not too many buyers are aware that the values are going down. So they're still paying inflated prices. If you're talking to an intelligent buyer, and if a seller has an intelligent advisory team, they're pricing their practice to sell, and the buyers are going to pay a fair price. But trying to overprice it today, not smart. All right. And then in terms of any other wonderful opportunities in the 2023 marketplace, probably sky's the limit is as we're getting further and further away from COVID. Do you see any other market forces before we, you know, dive back into the employee talent fueling cash flow? Well, any other any other market forces? 
Yeah, absolutely. Lenders, financing, it's getting very, very cautious. Lenders are scared to ever love and death right now, and that's sidelining a lot of potential deals. But there are lots of wonderful opportunities because there are a whole lot of successful practices in your niche. So there's going to be the meeting of the mind of buyers and sellers as long as what? They can agree on price and terms. Right. So interest rates have slowly been hiking up, still not significantly, but definitely a steady increase. And like you said, then it makes the the lenders, the financial institutions a little nervous. They want to protect their downside. They're very risk averse. So those are the types of things that we're seeing that can actually, that does affect deal flow and acquisitions and partnerships and all that. Well, let's just go to the numbers. One year ago, if you bought any kind of business, your interest rate on the loan you got to finance that acquisition was a certain number. Today, interest rates are about 50% higher. This means if you were buying a business that had a, I don't know, 10 or 20% net profit, that net profit is gone. So if you're thinking of selling a practice or any kind of business, you've got to think about what it's like for the buyer. If the acquisition debt and any kind of financing that happens later, like for working capital or for equipment, um, it's going to cost a whole lot more and that's eating into cash flow and profit. So this is not the time to be wishful thinking on pricing. The other thing is the forecasts. The forecasts are totally wishful thinking. Unless you can show a business, a practice that is has very stable cash flow, buyers are going to discount because, because those interest rates are going to be so much higher, they cannot make an error on pricing. Yeah, makes that, a lot of sense. Does it? Good. Happy. Yep. Because a lot of buyers are missing that. All right, let's go to the bottom left-hand corner here. So employee talent fuels cash flow. And we covered a little bit of, of the employee component, but you're saying here that the, you know, evaluating evaluating the employees and the team and probably the culture and the morale, all that very, very important. And the employees are what fuel or douse cash flow. Yeah, that's pretty much it, isn't it? If the employees can't generate the cash flow. There's no cash flow. And you know, look at Elon Musk, what happened in this mess. He's making one of the most disastrous acquisitions in history. He misjudged the value of Twitter. And why? Because he misjudged Twitter's employees. And he thought he had power over them. And look what happened. And his assets, his cash flow are walking out the door. I understand he's laying people off. But what about the employees that are still there? You think they're going to try to be productive? Oh, yes, I know. He says you have to work hard but they're gonna be pissed off. This is not good for the company. The other thing he did is he wasn't thinking about the advertisers and that's what brought in the cash flow. <laughs> the, the other thing that I've, I've been talking to people about a whole lot of times is you need to get this information before you buy businesses, before you buy the businesses. So what's happening in the must situation is discovering the horrible employee situation and the absence of revenue coming from advertisers. So it's looking like a dumb deal. Mm. My recommendation, yeah. begin by evaluating the employees of a company before you sign a binding offer. Yeah, sure, we're gonna look at the cash flow, we're gonna look at the financial statements, but very briefly, not, not deeply. We're gonna pretty much take the owner's word for it. And then we need to interview key employees. If we can't do that, then think about Musk the Musk mess. That's what you're opening yourself to. If the test of the employees goes well, then you can submit a, a non-binding letter of intent. And when you do that, you're focusing on the financial statements that have been given to you. And, and you're taking the owner's word that what you were shown is true. Later, we'll talk a little bit how you adjust those financial statements, but we don't need to do that now. Remember, employee talent, fuels, cash flow. Okay. All right. So Ted, let's go to the top of the second column here. Some risk for buyers and sellers. So what are some of these considerations? Well, besides interest rates and maybe um, financial statements that are not accurate, keep in mind that when, when, when the buyers are buying businesses, if they haven't interviewed those employees, they are going to be blindsided unless it's a miracle and all the employees are delighted. One of the things we're looking at, 
besides employee attitudes is their compensation. Nowadays, employees have not been paid what they want to be paid, and that's why they're walking out the door or they're slacking off, quietly quitting, they're saying. That means they're reducing their productivity. And in some sectors, and maybe in healthcare, I know, at least in nursing, I know this is the case, the availability of a pool of employees is very narrow because of full employment. So you got to be careful when you're looking at businesses, any kind of business, practices in particular, can you get the employees you need when you need them? Oh, and by the way, if you're getting into something where there are some deadwood, you got to be careful on how you get rid of them. One of the things that I tell my clients to do is spend a lot of time with the current employees who are really good and get them on your team so they want you to get rid of the deadwood and then you can lay them off. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of forces going on with with employee productivity, employee compensation and like you said, availability. So there's uh, physical therapy practice owners across the country, and they're all typically saying the same thing about their challenges and their 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 problems or or issues with hiring. And it could even be a front desk person, an administrative role, and also on the clinical side, physical therapists or any other licensed providers that's actually rendering service or you know assisting or or aids or anything like that. Any other assistance that might be helping in the practice. So it's not just like you said, not just nursing, definitely in physical therapy. And also, like you said, many, many other sectors. It's not just healthcare either. Keep in mind that because of the rising interest rates and what's happening in the economy, the upcoming recession, you need to get the multiple of profit right. You know, some people say businesses are priced at two or three or four or 10 or whatever times, whatever the reported profit is. Well, those multiples are going down, down. And if you don't know how to compute that, buyers and sellers, you better have an advisory team who does. And it's not enough for them to know how to do it. They got to be really good at explaining the rationale, because if they can't explain the rationale to the other side of the deal making table, there's no deal. So lean on your advisory team. So, so practice definitely lean on your advisory team. Practice owners may not realize it, but as an, as interest rates slowly increase, then the cost of capital increases. So it could be either buyers like us or any other buyers that are either raising capital, they have their own capital, if they're raising debt, and then there's an interest rate on that debt, regardless whether it's a bank, financial institution, some type of a lender, regardless, there's a cost of capital, regardless of where that capital comes from, right? So even if the, the buyers have a big bank account of, of liquid cash, and they're able to put all that down, there's still a cost to that capital because otherwise they could put that somewhere else, right? They could invest it, they could put it somewhere else. So let's talk a little bit more on that. Well, that's right. It's always an alternative. We're trying to decide where to best place our time and money. Really, it's no more complicated than that. Sellers need to get it right. What I tell buyers is don't let the seller's problems become yours. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Any other recap for that section? No. All right. So then the bottom right hand corner, discovering the opportunities. And, and what is this acronym here? Well, I created that one. It means employees, customers, employees, landlord, bank and suppliers. And the reason I created that acronym is those are non-financials. That's what we need to focus on. I'm one of those people who says if you focus only on financials, you're making a big mistake. We begin by what? looking at customers. If we look at the customers, we're trying to determine, is there going to be sustainable bottom line profit? And if there is, we're real interested in the company. What about employees? Well, we've talked about that. You need to be able to identify the performers in the Deadwood and what you're going to do about it. The landlord, a lot of businesses that are wonderful are not saleable because there's a lease and the landlord won't play ball. Not good. <laughs> Banks, well, we talked about that. If the bank's terms to finance the business now for the acquisition and later are not acceptable, in other words, it, eat, it eats into the profit, well, no deal. And suppliers, hey, look at the supply chain. It's been a mess uh, just about in every sector. It could get worse. You need to spend a lot of time on that one. If you need a piece of equipment and you can't get it because, it, let's say, an, an existing piece died on you, well, what? You're out of business, or at least for that sector. Does that make sense? Sure. So in terms of landlord, so you're saying if the landlord does not play ball, so that would be a lease agreement that 
the either is in the document in the agreement of the lease agreement where maybe it's not the lease is not transferable or reassignable to a new owner and maybe the lease is like currently active and it's a 10 or 15 year lease and, and sometimes much shorter three or five year leases right but if a buyer comes in and says hey we want to acquire some or all of your practice then the practice owner the business owner will then have to approach the landlord and say hey uh, can we reassign or transfer this lease agreement to a new practice owner or new physical therapy practice or a new healthcare practice owner new ownership if that practice owner were to decide to move forward and agree to terms and and actually sell the practice so a landlord can actually be a barrier to a deal being consummated and completed all the time it's about the money right now in the real estate field landlords are crying the blues so if you have a physical therapy practice in a building and it's not fully rented or some tenants are not paying rent that landlord i don't care what the lease says about assignment they can make your life hell whether they approve it or not the other mistake we see buyers make all the time is they they don't negotiate the term of the lease long enough not only give them time to pay the acquisition debt but then to sell it for a profit and have a lot more time available for whoever buys it you don't get that front and back end long enough you can buy a business that later becomes unsellable what's happening right now in every sector i won't say your sector because i don't know this for sure but a lot of owners are selling businesses because they're having some problems or they know they're going to have problems in 2023 with customers employees landlord banker suppliers you know landlords are not improving and maintaining properties as well as they should unless they're fully occupied getting market rate rents got it and in terms of landlords another thing that we've heard and seen is that the practice owner let's say the practice owner speaks with a potential buyer and they're interfacing they're going back and forth about financials maybe deal terms uh, price and terms and things like that so then the practice owner approaches the landlord and the landlord is like yeah sure um i would in i would hypothetically approve of a transfer of a lease or new ownership coming in and allowing you mr or mrs practice owner to get out of the current lease but then the landlord says either verbally and or in most likely then in writing would be the next step that they're going to basically jack up the the rates on the new buyer on the new ownership and then that's something that has the new own the potential new owners walking away from the deal because when you model it out there's just it was just too expensive and there's too much of that cash flow then potentially going to the lease and and the rental agreement as opposed to it going to compensation then, then then there's another market force here because employees are looking for more compensation healthcare reimbursement is fairly plateaued in many cases and then you have a, a landlord who's potentially asking for more rent or a new rental agreement if there's new ownership coming in so they'll say yeah in some cases yes i'll allow you to get out of your current lease but then it's going to be x amount percent more like the month after the new ownership takes over and forward so yeah so sometimes they're flexible but then they try to you know they, they try to work in their own best interests as what they perceive to be their own best interest but then it, in many cases the prospective buyers will walk away and now that owner is potentially stuck in that practice or in that location my clients ask for a copy of the lease during the first meeting with a potential seller if if that lease looks like it's going to be a no deal or a dumb deal we don't even bother looking at the employees or the financials hey there's something else too and it's becoming more common and I was tipped off to this by a, a lawyer in Chicago who uh, works with clients nationwide landlords now are often making the seller who is going to be gone continue to personally guarantee the lease which, which certainly could be challenging in in certain cases so that's <laughs> wow yeah it's happening all the time actually and so the, guess what they the the, the 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 sellers need to be selling to the right buyer because if the buyer defaults on a lease the seller who's now in hawaii gets to uh, pony up the money and protect the lease mm. wow all right any 
any final recap of business acquirers buying and acquiring the employee talent and cash flow, the two big areas that buyers are focused on? Yeah, they can read my books. I wrote a book called How to Prepare Yourself to Find and Buy the Right Business. And I wrote another book, How to Buy the Right Business the Right Way. Go get those books on Amazon, about 250 pages each, 500 and some tips. That's how the pros do it. Excellent. And for the audience to connect with you further, Ted, uh, your website, partneroncall.com, any other place on the internet for them to connect with you further? Yeah, I have, I don't know, 50 or 60 videos on YouTube. Just Google or go to YouTube for Ted Leverett. I'm on Amazon. That's about yeah, so, it. So your, your, your paperback books are on Amazon. They can just type in Ted Leverett and your, your multiple book titles will come up. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and go to the, um, go to YouTube for some of the videos. There's information there for buyers and sellers. Yeah. Oh, and I, I do want to say before we end, there was a really great video that I love from you, which was an ethical and legal and moral way of potential buyers like us interfacing or providing a, a, a suggestive employee survey. So, and I'll, I'll almost I'll maybe describe it now, or maybe you can come back in the future for another episode and, and describe it more in detail. But basically it was like a way where potential buyers like us, we could somewhat indirectly or directly evaluate or, or give a survey to the current employees. Now, I think the component of this, it depends on if the practice owner, if the physical therapy practice owner is looking to exit out of the practice in six months or, or in a very short timeline, then it is really, really important for us buyers to get to know the staff because the staff cannot be surprised or we want to minimize any shock or surprise with change of ownership and a new boss or a new practice, a, a new group coming in that's acquiring the practice. Now, if the practice owner is staying in the practice for one year, one year, two years, three years, et cetera, then maybe this is less important or you could do it you know, indirectly. But the video that you posted on YouTube was great because it was a way where buyers like us could suggest to the seller Hey, can we do some type of a an employee survey, an employee satisfaction survey? And with that, either myself or someone on my team, we could administer the the survey and we get to potentially meet these employees in person. I know there's a little bit of nuance to this, right? So maybe give like a, a few seconds uh, detail on this. Well, first of all, go to YouTube and look up my video. Here's what savvy buyers detect from employees of companies for sale. Here's what savvy buyers detect from employees of companies for sale. It details all of this. Basically, owners do not want you talking to their employees in any kind of business. So you have to be positioned as a buyer where the owner can benefit by you talking. And so you say to the owner, and this is just one of four or five ways, you say to the owner, position me as, as somebody in the industry who's going to come in and help the employees express what the business could do better, what, you know, suggestion box ideas, in other words, what could we do better? Talk to us about what it's like to work there. In other words, just get a conversation. It doesn't have to be an interrogation. And what you'll find is employees are delighted to be talking to somebody other than the boss or a direct supervisor, particularly an outsider who's industry knowledgeable. And they'll spill their guts. You don't have to, you can just be quiet and they will just talk. And during that conversation, they will tip you off to the risks and the opportunities. Conversation ends, you promise, and admittedly, that's the key, you promise the employees that you, you will not identify the source of information. But then you, the potential buyer, says to the owner, here's what I learned from your people. You've got several really good people. You've got a couple you're going to have to pay more attention to. Here are some really good ideas they came up with. And um, here's a couple things that bother me. It's that simple. If an owner won't allow that, my feeling is go find another owner, another business, because they're hiding something. I love it. All right. So check out partneroncall.com. This was Ted Leverett, author and business buyer advocate. He helps, helps with searcher and transaction advisory. And you can prepare, search, offer, and buy businesses. And he's been on both sides of many, many different deals over the years. And I didn't know until this morning a background in healthcare. So there we go. Hey, there's something else you didn't ask me about. What go about ahead. that pathway behind me? 
Oh yes, yes. The, there's a picture behind you. So every there's a fork in the road. It's a fork in the nine, road. Ninety nine percent of the folks are heading left, and then there's one individual going to the right behind you. So what's that about? That represents the people who actually get a done deal. Most people running off to the column to the left. They are wishful thinkers crowding around one another, trying to buy and sell businesses. And rarely does that happen off to the right. That's the person who bought the business or sold it. So you got to get this stuff right from the beginning. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think there's some stat. I don't know if it's like seven out of 10 or eight or nine out of 10, but most businesses that are listed for sale are never sold. And it's it's a real shame. And there's a whole other conversation we could go around that of inappropriate expectations or a, a certain dollar amount that a practice owner needs to secure for their retirement. And it needs to correlate to the financials of of the practice of the business. And, and many times that number does not. So that's a whole other conversation. Ted, we'd love to have you back in the future anytime. Okay, thanks for the opportunity. Excellent. Thank you very much. Hey, it's Dave Kittle. Are you a healthcare business owner or physical therapy practice owner who is looking to figure out your succession plan or exit strategy? We might be able to help. And in fact, we may be interested in acquiring your practice. If you're interested, you can reach out to me. Shoot me an email at dave at conciergepainrelief.com. That's D-A-V-E at C-O-N-C-I-E-R-G-E, painrelief.com or You can call me at any time, 646-781-8884.